Perceive, process, perform. Do you need inspiration for your practice? Or do you simply need to practice inspiration? With this series, we aim to do both. Give us 15 minutes and we'll give you practice inspiration. Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Ritter from Jupiter Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, and I'm here to spend some time with you today on this practice inspiration. Most of you know me from the Seattle Study Club Network for speaking on social media and recommendation marketing, as well as restorative dentistry. Right now, my passion and my interest is kind of come together into two different sections. One is obviously social media recommendation marketing, reviews, as well as technology in the dental practice. The second is utilizing those technologies like digital scanning and implants to do what is really important in a general practice, which is reproducible, profitable, enjoyable dentistry. And I'm gonna to try to share with you a synergy of both of those things as they come together. I'm gonna to start off with social media and we're gonna delve into some sort of digital scanning as well as implants. Uh, I've been doing this for a while now, and I have noticed that dentistry has changed quite a bit over the last specifically five years, mainly through the use of digital and digital tools that are available that were just not available before, as well as the new way of acquiring patients, which is not just from word of mouth, but more importantly, a deep dive into social media. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and let you know just a little bit about myself. I do practice down in Jupiter, Palm Beach Gardens. I live two miles from the beach. For those of you who follow me on my social media channels, you do realize that typically on a Saturday or Sunday, I'm walking on the beach. And during that time, I, I spend some time listening to podcasts while getting some exercise and some sun. And I know some of you are a little envious at times when the weather is pretty cold up north, but I'm not just using it to relax. I'm using it to kind of recharge my battery. Uh, let's jump right into social media. Obviously, everything has changed for me and my practice since I did a deep, deep investing and time and money into social media. Uh, for me, social media is a real platform that you can build your practice on. But you have to really understand what social media is. At the end of the day, it's an interaction, it's a community, and you're building a culture that you can expand through social media. The great thing is we can attract the type of patients that we want without having to spend the tremendous dollars from before before we'd spend a lot of money and kind of throw it out there and see if it worked or not. Not anymore. Today, we can go ahead and utilize social media to attract the specific patient to your practice so you can practice the type of dentistry that you want to. You have to really understand what social media and what it targets. Number two, you have to create high quality content. And most importantly, you need to measure those results and all of those metrics can be gleaned from your social media sites. Instead of going over all of the social media sites, I want to focus on one that has really become more popular than anything else, and that is Instagram. Years ago, Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus were all really, really good ways of connecting with patients, but quite honestly, the cheese has moved, and the cheese has moved now to Instagram. Instagram is quicker, it's faster, it's smaller packages of information, both high quality content of photographs as well as small content video. And quite honestly, the demographic has changed to where more people are using Instagram. Side note, just so you know, Instagram was acquired by Facebook, so they can be blended together. Your Instagram feed can fit into your Facebook feed as well. Also realizing that Facebook is gonna be changing. Mark Zuckerberg released recently information that the amount of daily updates is going to change and they're not gonna focus on that as much. So let's talk about Instagram specifically. What I do like about Instagram is the very quick nature of it, small packets of information, and mainly the visual art, both photography and video. When you're doing an Instagram feed, my recommendations to you would be, number one, make it dramatic, make it interactive, make it dental focused, and most importantly, use your hashtags for, surf, for uh, surfing to make sure that you are connecting with people that are looking for that specific type of practice or practice element that you're promoting. The other thing that you can do is you can promote those. So what you wanna do is find like-minded people, make sure that they follow you, you follow them, and then promote it out on Instagram. Make sure that all of the information, both pictures and video, is native. In other words, you create it. For today, typically I talk about digital marketing, but I'm also gonna be talking about digital planning and workflow. And Again, everything I do at this point is digital in nature. We acquire patients through digital communication, whether it be through a Google or Yelp review, or finding us specifically on Instagram for the type of 
practice procedure that we really want to focus on. And we all know that technology has changed a great deal in the last five to seven years. Quite honestly, I only use about 10% of what I learned in dental school today. These products that you see, uh, none, of the, none of them existed when I was in dental school and they make it very exciting and really enables us to provide high levels of quality dentistry at an affordable fee utilizing our laboratories, utilizing our specialists, and providing our patients with really high quality, high end dentistry that is practical and reproducible in our pra practices, which ultimately leads to the most important thing, which is profitability. One of the things that I've learned through the years utilizing digital scanners is it has made my life so much more predictable and reproducible. I've had five digital scanners, and right now the three that I use on a daily basis are the iTero Element, the True Definition Scanner, and the Trios 3 Scanner. All three of these scanners will get you there. I want to make sure everybody understands. I compare digital scanners to high-end automobiles, a Lexus, uh, Infiniti, a Mercedes, a BMW. They will all get you there with style and grace. The real question is, what are you looking for? If you do a lot of Invisalign treatments, my recommendation would be use an iTero element. If you do a lot of modelist dentistry, my recommendation would be use a Trios. If you're looking for lowest cost of entry into this market, then I would recommend a True Definition Scanner. But also please realize, and I can't go into a deep dive on this right now, they all come with associated costs and click fees. So these three scanners that I actually have in my practice all come with a monthly click fee after the first year. The first year, each one of these scanners have no monthly click fee, which includes unlimited scans and software data updates. So these are numbers that you need to look at for your practice and figure out if they work themselves into your practice or not. They have made my life so much more easy and predictable. So for me to take away my digital scanner is a very difficult thing to do. It's one of those things that I really could not practice without right now. I want to share with you very quickly how this now leads to implant dentistry. People will go ahead and do a hard search, let's say on Instagram, they'll do a hashtag for uh, implants, dental implants, new smile, and they find me this way, which is very different than it used to be. What is the most profitable procedure in a GP's office today? In my office, quite simply, it's a single unit posterior implant restoration. Now to be clear, I don't extract and place teeth, uh, place implants where teeth were. That's not what I do. I utilize my specialists. That's something that I really believe in through the Seattle Study Club network is to utilize your specialists. Uh, and while I know a lot of GPs are placing their implants, it's a skill that I never acquired uh, 25 years in on practice. So what happens for me is when somebody finds me through some sort of social media, uh, whether it be, again, Google or finding me on Instagram, the patient comes in with a broken tooth. And if the tooth is not savable, I will go ahead and explain to the patient what their problem is, focus the problem, make sure they understand what the problem is, utilizing chair-side technology like scanners to show them what it is or an intraoral photograph of their existing dentition. Um, and then, of course, we'll go ahead and show them on an app what needs to be done for the extraction and the implant placement. And then, of course, we'll go ahead and refer them out to our specialist, the periodontist, the oral surgeon, to extract and place the implant. In this case here, a patient found me, and what happened was the patient had fractured tooth number 12 off of the gum line. She has some other issues going on in her mouth, but she wanted to fix this immediately because it's in the critical smile area. So we referred her after pulling an impression to fabricate a unilateral valplast partial so she would not walk around without a uh, tooth in her smile. We referred her out to the surgeon, the periodontist, who did the extraction and placed an implant. And of course, you can place whatever implant and restore whatever implant you're comfortable with. When the patient returns a few months later, we'll go ahead and we will place what's called a scan body. Some people up north in Canada call it a scan flag. These scan bodies come from different manufacturers. They're done by different laboratories and different scanner companies. Those are placed in the mouth into the existing implant. We take an x-ray to confirm the fit. We take a digital photo of the scan flag or scan body as well as an intraoral picture for shade verification. At this point, in this case, I went ahead and we scanned it using an older type of scan body, but the newer ones from the implant system that I use from BioHorizons is their newer scan body. And what happens is this gets sent to our laboratory 
This laboratory utilizes the milling center, and in this case Vulcan from BioHorizons, but it could be from any milling center whatsoever. And from there, they fabricate a custom abutment along with an all ceramic crown, whether it be zirconia, or in this case, this is Emacs, that is one piece screw mentable. So this is a screw retained crown. And from that, of course, the easiest part of this is we don't have to worry about cement retention. So what gets sent back to me is a printed model with an analog that is printed in the model along with a one piece, what people now are calling a screw mentable crown. The patient returns to my office. We remove the um, Valplast, Univer Valplast Universal. Uh, the Valplast again is the piece that is replacing the missing tooth. We unscrew the healing cap. We screw the one piece, one piece screw mentable crown to place. We take an x-ray to confirm the fit. We make sure the contacts are intact. We test to make sure that the occlusion is where we want it to be. If it is, we double torque that to place with the appropriate torque driver. We fill the access channel with very inexpensive 99 cent Teflon tape. We use a little bit of adhesive and use one shade darker, one shade darker, flowable composite. Why do we do this in like Curate? Because if we ever need to reaccess the access channel, we know exactly where the access hole is. If you go with the same color, you might not be able to see the delineation between the composite and the ceramic crown. And this is what the patient leaves with. It's very reproducible, it's predictable, and most importantly, it is a profitable procedure in my practice because the first appointment is about a half an hour. The second appointment is a half an hour. There is no anesthetizing the patient. There is no laying down a cord. There is no fabricating provisional. Uh, we don't have to worry about any of those issues when we're talking about posterior implant dentistry. Very producible, re reproducible, predictable, and profitable procedure in one's practice. I will go ahead and show you another case. Again, this is an older gentleman in my practice who broke tooth number 19 off of the gum line, had an older restoration on top of it that failed. Sent him out to the periodontist oral surgeon to have the tooth removed. In this case, when it's a lower or mandibular tooth in the posterior, we don't even have to fabricate a provisional at this point. The patient leaves with a healing abutment in place from the surgeon. Four months later, the patient returns to my practice. I take the same three pictures every single time. It's one picture with the healing abutment or the and or the scan body in place, the scan body in place, along with an intraoral picture of shade. Uh, we go ahead and scan this. And in this case here, we utilize the TRIO scanner. And what the great thing about the TRIO scanner is after it's scanned, you have access to this information both on your app, iPad and your phone via a dedicated app. You can go back and take a look at all of the information that was scanned chair side, adjust it, as well as send notes, as well as diagrams to the laboratory to explain to them what you're looking for. You can remove the opposing arch, show them where the access was, show them the emergence profile and what you're looking for. It's a very, very integrated application that works very well with the digital scanner. These are the 3D renderings after the file has been ripped, the, what's called the STL file from your laboratory. In this case, it's three shape software. Uh, the laboratory uses to design where the uh, analog is and then eventually where the custom abutment is going to be. The laboratory designs the custom abutment as well as in this case, the one piece zirconia crown monolithic with a screw access channel. The, spot, the file is split. The file is then sent to, in this case, for BioHorizons Vulcan, but again, this can be any one of the mill centers for you to mill out a custom abutment, which provides us with margin placement, custom emergence profile, and then, of course, the restoration itself, which is 100% milled zirconia, is milled chair side by the laboratory. They are then uh, looted together and sent back to me as a one-piece screw mentable crown. Patient returns to my office. We unscrew the healing cap screw the one piece screw mentable crown. In this case, it's tooth number 19 to place. We check the uh, via x-ray to make sure it's fully seated. We make sure that the contacts are in place and adjust the occlusion in the mouth. Uh, after the patient looks at this and makes sure and verifies that they enjoy the restoration and they're willing to accept it, we'll go ahead and torque this twice to place. We'll place our 99 cent Teflon tape through the access channel into the chimney is what I call it. Use a little bit of adhesive use some flowable composite. In this case, you can see it's one shade darker and light cure. At this point, the patient leaves a happy patient. They've got a restoration in place that feels good. And in my line of thinking, um, we've changed the mode of failure on this case.
Basically, we have an almost unbreakable crown, being 100% monolithic zirconia, on a custom milled titanium abutment. As long as the patient maintains the health of the restoration, making sure they come back for hygiene exams and does their due diligence at home, this is a long time restoration for the patient. And for me, it's a one time visit, one time to place, uh, and quite honestly, it's profitable and reproducible. So I want to thank you for your time. It is a pleasure to spend time with the Seattle Study Club and Seattle Study Club Symposium and the Seattle Study Club Network. Thank you very much.